Up to this point, I've shown you how to add a single job to a campaign. What if we want to add more than one job at one go? We can do that. So we're going to go back into the Q dash and I'm going to point you to the batch import button right here. So let's bring this up. And now we see the import jobs from file dialog. To import multiple jobs at once, we're going to import from a file. Now the file needs to have an array of objects in the JSON format. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click this and I've got this known people.json file. I'm gonna go ahead and preview this and you can see that it's just an array of objects and each object has a name, a birth date, a reference to a photo image file, and then an output name that will be used by Templator when generating renders. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open and the dialogue also has this satellite option. This allows you to assign each object in that JSON array to a specific satellite for processing. In our case, we only have one satellite, and so we're going to choose that one. We also have the option to decide which template we want each object to be applied to. And in this case, we only have the name cards template that we registered earlier in a different segment, so we're gonna just choose that. And now we're gonna go ahead and click Upload. So now that everything's uploaded, you can see each object from that array is now considered an individual job within this campaign. Let's go ahead and see what a singular job looks like from that import. We can click here just to see this one job. And we can see that, you know, it's got the satellite that we signed it to and the render status is set to ready. But then we also have these properties here. And you can see that the name, birth date, and photo are brought in as well as the output name from the object in that file. But then this AEP property is merged in from the default template that we selected, as well as the target is also brought in from that template that we selected when we created the campaign, the default template. So that's effectively how you can import multiple jobs at one time. Now we can sort the rows by any of the properties up here in the table. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on expand table sheet. And that effectively eliminates most of the truncation that you might see in the labels here. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this output label and that's gonna reorganize everything so everything's in order, organized by output and ascending order. That's helpful for when we're inside of After Effects and we're iterating through these jobs just to make sure that we're in sync with what we're seeing in the Q dashboard. So let's go ahead and bring this back down and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over to the right. Now let's bring up After Effects. I'm gonna open up the job selection setup dialog and I'm gonna sort by output here and keep it at ascending. I'm gonna decide how many jobs per page I wanna see when I open up this queue inspector. So under this query results group, I'm gonna make sure that I'm just gonna get five jobs per page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on open queue inspector and it's gonna return five jobs out of the many that are here in the campaign. So if I open this one, you can see that the output is 01 Susan B. Anthony and here we go, 01 Susan B. Anthony. And let's go ahead and scroll down. We can see that the second job is 02 Alexander Hamilton, 02 Alexander Hamilton, and so on and so forth. So what's nice about the inspector is we can see exactly what Templator is retrieving from Q at any given time based on the query that we set up here. We can also decide we want 10 jobs at a time rather than five. So if I click on this, you're gonna see 10 jobs show up in the inspector. Here's the 10th job and there's the Levi Strauss one and here's Levi Strauss. I can also advance a page and then open up the inspector again. And there's not another 10, so there's only six more jobs, but you can see that this first job starts on output 11, Harriet Tubman, and you can see that we're looking at page two. So the way that Q works in terms of retrieving jobs is through what we call pages. That's an important concept to grasp as we head into learning how to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Actually, let's go ahead and do five and click on this one more time. And there we go. So we're back at, at there and I'm gonna hit save. Okay, the settings that you set up inside of the job selection setup dialog carry through the data merge. If I were to get to the end of the data merge, it's only gonna show me the fifth one and then it's gonna loop back to the first one because there's only five per page. It doesn't go to the next page. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance to the first one. And here's the Susan B. Anthony right here. And then I'm gonna advance to the next one. And now I'm looking at Alexander Hamilton, 
third one is gonna be Martin Luther King, and then the fourth one's gonna be Abraham Lincoln, and then the fifth one's gonna be Frederick Douglass. Next, what we're gonna do is just show you how to generate output based on this concept. Before I hit render, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the destination folder, bring back AE, and then I'm gonna set my render settings to just the work area as draft, and then I'm going to choose my output module to be QuickTime 422 high quality. So now click render, and what that's going to do is it's going to respect the query setup that I've made inside of the job selection setup. So it's going to only get the first page and the first five jobs in that page and render them out. So let's go ahead and click render and it saves the project before it does it. And then you can see here, it's using the output name to write to disk. And so there they are right here. That's one, two, three, four, five. So we can see all of the videos have been rendered out and these are in draft format so they're not very high quality that's okay and what we're going to do now is go back into the job selection setup and there's a special checkbox here called process blank subsequent pages here what i'm going to go ahead and do is choose to process two subsequent pages or actually i'm just going to do one subsequent page and i'm going to advance to the second page this is telling templater to get the second page, render those out, and then process the following five and the next page. So in this case, I should actually have 10 jobs that are rendered to disk. So let's go ahead and hit save, and now I'm gonna hit render, and we should see it start from 06 and then continue down. There we go, there's W.E.B. Dubois, there's I.M. Pei, Benjamin Franklin, James Madison. Okay, so this is the Last one in the second page, Levi Strauss. And then it's gonna go on to the 11th one because we have that setting check. So you can see now it's processing the subsequent page there. So when you wanna render out using the manual method, basically you have to just decide how many pages need to be rendered based on what you have there. Now, ideally what you wanna do is use bot with Q, but in some cases you just wanna do batch rendering. And so it's important to know how the querying setup works. Okay, so this should be the last one, and we can see there's a little bit of a bug here saying that there's 15 remaining when in fact there was, there was none, so definitely we'll fix that. So you can see that we've rendered out page one, that's one through five, and then we had page two, which is six through 10, and because we set it up so we would render a subsequent page from the second page, on forward, we have 11 through 15. So that's effectively how we can render in batch with jobs that exist inside of a campaign. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to click around to learn more and subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stefchansky, signing off. Thanks again.